Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 14 to my basic RPG Game Maker tutorial series. In this series, we're going to be doing the Game Maker. We're going to be finishing up the artificial intelligence on our enemies so that they can attack us. And I'm just kind of laughing because this is the third time I've tried to record this video. Last time I accidentally stopped the video, like halfway through it. That was kind of annoying. So, <laughs> anyways, let's get started. Real quick though, I did want to mention that the last, these are the last two days to get my Udemy course for the $10 price. And then it's going to go up in price after... The next two days so check that out on my website there'll be a link in the video but let's get started the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come into our scripts and we're going to go into enemy states we're going to duplicate the idle state duplicate right click on it and duplicate we're going to name this script enemy stall state script enemy stall state. We're going to take this um, line of code out and we're going to have a check in here that uses an alarm because we're going to use an alarm to see basically how long we should be in this stall state. So if alarm one is less than or equal to zero state equals script enemy idle state. So basically we're not going to do anything in this state but wait till the alarm goes up and then when the alarm goes up we're going to switch back to the idle state. So it's a really really simple state. Nothing to it at all. And we're going to press the green check mark. Now we're going to open up our enemy object right here, our slime object. And we're going to give it the alarm because we've got alarm 1, this is the wander or alarm 0, this is the wander alarm. We're going to add alarm 1, drag over a code action and put a comment in here. And this is going to be the stall alarm. So we've got the wander alarm and the stall alarm. Did I use macros for those? Nope. Okay, good. So we've got the wander alarm and the stall alarm. Now what we're going to do is we're going to modify the chase state. So the chase state, well actually we're not going to modify the chase state. We're going to add a collision event. Add event, collision with the player. Now uh, this will override the, in, uh, the collision event that we're inheriting, but since the collision event that we're inheriting just says collide and doesn't have anything else in it, that's okay. We can override it. But just know that it would override that collision event because we're giving it our own. So this is going to be where we damage the player. Damage the player. Okay. Let me open up my reference here. Now there's not that much that goes on in here. So we're going to say we want to make sure that we're in that we're not in the that we're not in the stall state. We don't want the enemy to be able to damage the player when it's in the stall state. So we're going to say if state does not equal script enemy stall state. Okay? If we're not in the stall state, then we can damage the player. So let's do that right here. We're going to we're going to create a couple temporary variables so that we can create the damage object in a good spot. So we're going to get a direction, var dir equals point direction. And we're going to go from the player object to us. We're going to get that direction. So we're going to do other.x because we're in a collision event so we can use other to refer to the player. Other.y, x, y. So we're getting the direction from the player object to us. Now we're going to convert this direction into uh, some x and y variables and we're going to use the special function called length dir. I think I've talked about it a little in here already. We're going to use it again. It's good practice. So x dir equals length dir x and the length is just going to be 1 
and the direction is direction. Var y dir equals length dir y. Length is one and the direction is direction. Now we're going to create a damage object and we can use the same damage object that the player uses. We just need to tell that damage object who created it. So we're going to say var damage equals instance create and then we're going to do other dot x which is the player because we want to create the damage object on top of the player but in order to make our knockback work we're going to use the x dir and the y dir here as an offset so that we're not creating the damage object exactly on top of the player because if we create it exactly on top of the player the knockback will always send the player to the right because that will be the direction that it sees. So we're using this extra and wider right here as an offset, just a little bit of an offset. Plus extra other dot y plus wider. And then the object is object damage. Okay, so we've created the damage object. Now we need to tell it who created it. So damage dot creator equals ID so our own ID now it knows who created it and we're gonna give I'm gonna give the damage object a little bit less of a knockback because I don't want it to knock the player back as far as it is the default knockback on our damage object is 10 you can see that right here knockback equals 10 so I'm gonna modify that and set its knockback to 5 so damage dot knockback equals 5 okay then we want to set the enemy or ourselves, the enemy, into the stall state so that it doesn't attack immediately again. So we're going to say state equals script enemy stall state. And then we're also going to set our stall alarm. Alarm 1 equals room speed. Now the room speed is just 30, so you could replace this with 30, but I'm going to use room speed. That way, if I increase the room speed, it, the alarm will still be the same amount. Now, I think that's everything that we need. We should be able to run the game now. Let's double check this. Okay, and it's going to chase us. When we get close enough, it should be able to damage us now. You can see it waits there for a second after it damages us. And there we go. Killed me. So now the slimes can attack. Um, we don't have any particles or any effects right now, so it looks a little bit boring when they come up and attack. It doesn't really look that nice. But we can keep them at bay. We can keep them far enough. Whoa, I think I took damage there. I'm trying to dash through it. But we can keep them at bay. There's a couple other things we could do, like a visual flash to help represent the fact or help tell the player that we took some damage and we'll go over some of those different particles and effects that we can do to make that more apparent but anyways uh, this is gonna be a shorter video it's already nighttime for me and I've been I've been kinda sick over the last few days uh, I had a fever yesterday but I've been getting plenty of water and sleeping a lot like today I worked all day but then right after work I took a nap <laughs> So now I'm going to be up all night probably because I can't nap like that without staying awake at nights. But anyways, I feel like I'm starting to get better. So that's good. But thank you guys so much for your support. Um, if this video helped you, be sure and like it and favorite it and share it on Facebook. Share this series with your friends if they're wanting to learn how to use Game Maker. It's a great series for them to start with. So thank you guys so much and I will see you guys later.